had I a golden thread and needles so fine. I'd weave a magic strand of rainbow design. Of rainbow design. Far over the water, I'd reach my magic band. So they'd understand got a song for you from maybe a hundred years ago. Hudson River steamboat steaming up and down. New York to Albany or any river town. Choo choo to go ahead, choo choo to slacker. The captain and the first mate, they both choo to backer. Choo choo to go ahead, choo choo to slacker. Packet boat, tow boat and a double stacker. Choo choo to tarry towns, bite and dive all around. Choo choo to go ahead, choo choo to backer. It's 150 miles, 142 exactly, from New York City to Albany. A big arm of the ocean with a deep channel. Winds between the cliffs around West Point and Storm King Mountain. And if the winds weren't right, the boats would pile up there, waiting for a favorable wind and tide to carry them through. Shad boat, pickle boat, laying side by side. Fisher folk and sailormen waiting for the tide. Rain cloud, storm cloud over yonder hill. Thunder on the Dunderberg rumbles in the kill. Choo choo to go ahead, choo choo to slacker. Packet boat, tow boat, and a double stacker. Choo choo to tarry down, spite and dive all around. Choo choo to backer, choo choo to backer. The old time, the old time steamboats used to get in races. They'd tie down the valve on the the safety valve on the boiler so they get more pressure. But they also had these fancy steam calliopes to play music for the passengers. If they used too much steam for the calliope, they wouldn't have any steam left for the boat. The Sedgwick was racing, but she lost all hope. She used all her steam on the big calliope, but she hopped right along. She was hopping quick all the way from Stony Point up to Papal up and Crick. Shoot you to go ahead, shoot you to slacker. Packet boat, tow boat, and a double stacker. Shoot you to tarry town, spite and dive all around. Shoot you to go ahead, shoot you to backer. I feel kind of an especial affinity for this song, not just because my home is along the Hudson. My, my great grandfather worked in. A uh, company making boilers for steamboats and was blown up when they were testing one once. Got a lot of good songs about this whole part of the world. Uh, one of the best of all is about that famous canal that uh, runs from the top of the Hudson River, that is the top where you can navigate near Albany, and heads west out to the Great Lakes. And this was the great thing 150 years ago some people said it couldn't be done. It was too wild idea to build a canal through the wilderness up to the lake, to Lake Erie. But uh, Governor Clinton, he was determined to push it through. They called it Clinton's Ditch. And when it was finally finished, it, it uh, surpassed everybody's dreams. And the farmers up there could get their produce to New York City within a few days instead of a few months by horse and wagon going through the mud holes. Well, 
Here I e was arising, and the gin was getting low. I scarcely think we'll get a little drink till we get to Buffalo. Till we get to Buffalo. We were 40 miles from Albany. Forget it, I never shall. What a terrible storm we had one night on the Erie Canal. Oh, the Erie was a rising and the gin was getting low. I scarcely think we'll get a little drink till we get to Buffalo. Oh, till we get to Buffalo. Of course, you know, they made great speed, about three miles an hour on the average, walking behind the mules that were pulling the barges. Well, the captain, he stood on the deck with a spyglass in his hand. Said the fog, it was so tarnal thick that he could not spy the land. Oh, the Erie was rising and the gin was getting low. I scarcely think we'll get a little drink till we get to Buffalo. Till we get to Buffalo. The canal men were a rough lot. And at the ends of the line, they'd go and have a wild time and spend the money. Tell about the great storms they had on the canal. Actually, storms could be a bad thing. If they had too much rain and it broke the bank of the canal, the water would all flood out. And it could carry the canal boat with it and leave it stranded out in the cow field someplace. They'd never get it back. There was no way in those days to lift up a big canal boat get it back on the canal, even if they repaired the canal. Well, the cook, she was a grand old gal. She wore a ragged dress. We heisted her upon the pole as a signal of distress. Oh, the Erie was a-rising and the gin was getting low. I scarcely think we'll get a little drink till we get to Buffalo. Loaded up on barley, we were chuck full up on rye. The captain he looked down on me with a gall darn wicked eye. Oh, the he rye was rising and the gin was getting low. I scarcely think we'll get a little drink till we get to Buffalo. Till we get to Buffalo. Well, the captain he got married. The cook she went to jail, and I'm the only sea cook son that's left to tell a tale. Oh, the Erie was a rising, and the gin was getting low. I scarcely think we'll get a little drink till we get to Buffalo. Till we get to Buffalo. If you haven't been humming this chorus with me, you've been missing something. It's fun. The Erie was a rising, the gin was getting low. I scarcely think we'll get a little drink till we get to Buffalo. Oh, oh. Well, the Erie was a-rising and the gin was getting low. I scarcely think we'll get a little drink till we get to Buffalo. Till we get to Buffalo. Till we get to Buffalo. Well, up north of the Erie Canal is a range of mountains, pretty big for the east coast of the USA. They get up to 5,000 feet. Adirondacks. And, uh... Some good songs from that region, too. Lumber songs, mostly. Some mining, but mostly lumbering. You can sing on this one, too. It has an old Irish-type chorus. Derry down, 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 derry down. Try it again. Derry down, 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 derry down. Come all you bold fellers and listen to me. Sit down a while, I'll tell you of a spree. The truth I'll tell you without a mistake of the rackets we had about Blue Mountain Lake. Derry down, 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 Derry down. Did you get it? Derry down, 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 Derry down. Bill Mitchell, you know, he kept our shanty and as mean a damn man as you ever did see. Ha! You know, I left out a verse and I've forgotten it. Now, how does it go? The second verse. Mm -hmm. There's the Sullivan brothers and old Jimmy Lou. 
Big Mose Gilbert and Dandy Pat too As fine lot of fellers as ever you seen And we all work for Griffith on Township 19 Derry down, 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 Derry down, Derry down Down, down, Derry down Now here's the verse about the fellow that kept the shanty Little Mitchell, you know, he kept our shanty And as mean a damn man as you ever did see He'd lay around the shanty from morning till night And if a man said a word, he was ready to fight Derry down, 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 Derry down, Derry down Down, down, Derry down One morning for daylight, Jim Lou, he got mad Knocked hell out of Mitchell and the boys was all glad his wife, she just stood there, and the truth I will tell. She was tickled to death to see Mitchell catch hell. Derry down, 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 Derry down, Derry down, 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 Derry down. Old Griffith, he stood there, the crabby old drake, and a hand in the racket sweet thought he would take. When a couple of the boys come and took him away, Cripes said old Griffith, I've nothing to say. Derry down, 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 Derry down, Derry down, 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 Derry down. Well, you can talk of your fashions and styles to be seen, but there's none like Nelly, the cook of 19. She's short, thick, and stout without a mistake. And we all call her Nelly, the belle of Long Lake. Derry down, 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 Derry down. Derry down, 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 Derry down. Well, my story's about over, adieu to you all. Christmas is coming, I'm a glowing to Glen's Fall. When I get there, I will go on a spree. Cause when I get drunk, boy, the devil's in me. Derry down, 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 Derry down. Derry down, 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 Derry down. It's an old, old Irish tune, and I guess these lumberjacks had a wild party and decided they'd make up a song about what happened. And use the tune, swipe the old melody, put some new words to it. Actually, the fellow who was supposed to have written that song uh, died not too many years ago. He was in his 90th, 92nd year, I think. His name was Yankee John Galusha. I'd never met him. I wish I had. I've seen pictures of him. He'd been a lumberjack. He was a guide. Lived in a little shanty all by himself in the woods. And actually, I learned that song from a man who met him. I thought you'd like to meet him. Interesting fellow, this friend of mine, he collected that song from Yankee John. My friend, uh, Frank Warner is his name. Uh, he's a YMCA director by profession. All his life, works out in Long Island. But uh, when his vacation time comes, he takes off with his family, cruises around, and gets acquainted with the music in the little corners of our country. And one of the corners he searched out was the Adirondack Mountains. And one of the people he sat down with and swapped songs was Yankee John Galusha. So I thought maybe you'd like to meet Frank Warner. He's got a whole batch of good songs. He used to be director of the New York State Folklore Society. Uh, knows, oh, a jillion of them. So just a moment here, we'll have Frank Warner and you can learn more about Adirondacks and Yankee John and everything else. Frank Warner, do you know it's just 20 years since you and I first met and you uh, were singing an album of Hudson Valley ballads. Do you remember that? Say it isn't so. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're older and I hope wiser. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now you remembered a whole batch of songs from Yankee John Galusha. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Steve, I think of all the people uh, north of the West Nixon line that I have collected, he had the richest store. There were a tremendous uh, number of songs that he knew. He said he, that he knew songs from the time he was 10 years old. <laughs> and all you need to do is to have a little tea on the kitchen table and sing away and sing away and sing away. Year after year, we went back to see him. Uh, 
when uh, you showed me a picture of him, which maybe they could put up there, how old was he when? He was, he was 81 when I first met him at Minerva, New York, in the Adirondacks. And um, that's, that's when we had, we had heard about him from Carl Carmer, who was writing the, the book, The Hudson, you know. And so uh, he told us to be sure to see Yankee John Galusha when we went in the Adirondacks song collecting. We met him and went home with him, and sat down in his kitchen, and I sang for him and he sang for me, and that, there that lasted is. for about 10 years. Oh. That's Yankee John. He was 81 then, and uh, I knew him till he was 91 when he died. He was a farmer and a lumberjack when he was a young fellow. He was a lumberjack in the Adirondacks. He was a big game guide. Those eyes looked like they'd shot many a bear. Oh, you know that. He was on, um, he was a warden on Vanderwacker Mountain <laughs> when I first knew him there, looking after a fire warden, you know. I sang one of his songs. How about sing us another one of them? What did you sing? I sang Blue Mountain Lake. Oh, you got my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> well, he sang this one about the Erie Canal. <clears throat> you can talk of your picnics and trips on the lake. But the trip on the Erie, you bet, takes the cake with the beefsteak as tough as a fighting dog's neck and the flies playing tag with the cook on the deck. Haul in your tow lines and take in your slack. Take a reef in your britches and straighten your back. Mind what I tell you and don't you forget to tap the mules gently when the cook's on the deck. Now the cook, she's a daisy, she's dead gone on me. With a fiery red head and she's twice 23. She's knock-kneed and freckled, a dumpling in the pet. And we use her for a headlight at night on the deck. All in your tow lines and take in your slack. Take a reef in your britches and straighten your back. Mind what I tell you and don't you forget to tap the mule gently when the cook's on the deck. And he laugh and tell the stories about the, the Erie Canal times and how uh, the cook on the, on the Erie Canal was always the head man, you know, <laughs> and told them all the rest of what to do. What other songs did you get up there in the Adirondacks? Some of the most important songs were songs of the uh, Civil War. Uh -huh. I was most interested in them. His own brother died from wounds, he said, that he received in the Civil War. He was brought back home there and died in the room next to where Yankee John was staying. And he had a great feeling about Civil War. One little short song that he sang for me. Couldn't remember but one stanza. He was of Irish extraction, you know. And this comes out in a song. It's about the Battle of Bull Run. <laughs> this is his style. I'm, I was interested in, in his particular style of singing. And, and this illustrates it pretty well. He said, uh, This day will be remembered by America's noble sons. If it hadn't have been for Irishmen, what would our union done? Tis hand to hand we fought them all in the broiling sun. Stripped to the pants, we did advance at the Battle of Bull Run. That's the way he oh, sang it. Stripped to the <laughs> pants, we did advance. <laughs> That's the way he sang that song, yeah. yeah. But he also had some songs of the American Revolution, too, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, quite a number. And even back beyond that, that is uh, this continent. He sang a lot of songs of the old continent, uh, Ireland, Scotland, England. How about one of them? Well, I, I don't know them very well, but I was thinking about uh, he sang songs of the French and Indian War. That was an interesting song, but it's still pretty long. I don't know if you want it. Oh, come on. Let's get it. It's a good song. It is a good song. It's about uh, Mont Calm and Wolf, he said. At the Battle of uh, Quebec. 
Battle of Quebec, 1759. Let me see if I can get in tune with you. Let's I thought it. I would sing it like he did. Oh, I, you, no you know, of course, he never did use an instrument. Okay. Bad news is come to town. Bad news is carried. Some says my love is dead. Some says he's married. As I was a pondering on this, I took to weeping. They stole my love away whilst I was sleeping. Then away went this bold youth all on the ocean. To save America was his intention. He landed in Quebec with all his party. The city to attack, being brave and hearty. He lined his army up in lines so pretty on the plains of Abraham back of the city. At a distance from the town where the French would meet him, in numbers boldly they, they'd throw to beat him. Montcalm and this bold youth together walked. Arm in arm like brothers they talked. Till each one took his place and did retire. It was then these numerous hosts began their fire. Little did he think death was so near him. When shot down from his horse was this our hero. We'll long lament his death in tears of sorrow. He raised up his head where the cannons did rattle. And to his aid he said, how goes the battle? His aide de camp replied, it's ending in our favor. Then said this bold youth, I quit this earth with pleasure. <laughs> That's the way he <laughs> Frank, there's something uh, peculiar here. Now, you got a southern accent. How come you singing all these Yankee songs? Where did you start off from? <clears throat> I was raised in North Carolina. Went to Duke and uh, was exposed to a great collector, Dr. Frank C. Brown, when I was in college. Collector of folk songs. Uh -huh. Ballads. Ballads and folklore in general. Seven volumes of his work are now published, as you know. So after you got out, you still stayed interested in these old songs? Yes, I came to New York to work, and with the YMCA of the city of New York, very long, long time ago. Do you still do some collecting in the South? Uh, some, not very much. I've been teaching a good deal and using them and coaching young people in the folklore field. Well, there's one particular song I think you should know that uh, Frank Warner collected which uh, is known around the world now. I think it was about 30 years ago that he met a young fella and uh, he learned this song. 20 years ago, I learned it from you. I used to go around singing it in colleges. So did I. <laughs> and then uh, three young fellows out in Stanford, they wrote me a letter saying, would you please send me a copy of your banjo book? And a year later, I got another letter. They say, Pete, you know, we have a job now down in the San Francisco nightclub. We call ourselves the Kingston Trio. Yeah. <laughs> and they made a record of the song which you collected. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Hang down your head and cry. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Oh, boy, you're bound to die. We'll sing it all the way through later, though. I'd like you to... Maybe in a moment, tell us about the man that you collected this song from. Yes. Well, we went to the mountains of North Carolina uh, shortly after we were married, my wife and me, Ann Warner, uh, to uh, see people who had made a dulcimer for me. I was very much interested in dulcimer. And so we went uh, to see Nathan Hicks and his family, and he had gotten many, many people from around the mountains to come in and meet us. And we had a song session that Sunday afternoon on the mountains. And uh, that's where I met Frank Prophet for the first time. Uh, we went up, up over the mountains into Georgie's Gap. Uh, I got a picture back there, Georgie's Gap. 
they uh, maybe we uh, before There's we take a break. Yeah, there, you can There's see. George's Gap. That that's in the Blue Ridges in the in the northeast corner, northwest corner of uh, North Carolina, and that's the kind of land that he lived in. That's where he was born. When he was 16 years old, he walked barefooted to the first town over in Tennessee. Now, before we show any more pictures, though, yeah. let me just end off because we have to take a break now. All right. And maybe we just might mention that Frank Prophet himself died very tragically, yeah. only 52 years old, uh, just, a, just a little while ago, last year. And people all over the country have uh, have felt the shock of his death because they loved this man and his songs. He was a very simple mountain man, but when he died, uh, the New York Times had an obituary for that him. That is right. All across this country, his so, story was told. Stick around just a moment. We'll have uh, some more songs of Frank Prophet. We even have a movie of Frank himself singing. We see you then. Frank Prophet died in Thanksgiving, 1965. There was a two-column obituary in the New York Times, an unusual thing for a simple mountain farmer. But he was an important man, just as there are many important people in this country. And Frank Warner, why don't you tell us some more about him and his music? Well, uh, we got to be blood brothers, really. Uh, over these many, many years, we've gone back to his home and we've seen his family grow up. And we've collected uh, year after year after year. In fact, he got to be a collector himself, uh, interested as he was in what we were doing, trying to save the old time songs for the Library of Congress. And How so old was he when you first met him? Well, it was 1938. Do we have a picture of him back in those days? What's the earliest the photograph? Earliest one <coughs> is on the, on the side of the hill here where. I met him that Sunday afternoon with his friends, and uh, we met and, and sang together. There, there they are, that's the picture. And Frank is sitting on the left with a guitar, and his uh, father-in-law is playing with a white shirt there, uh, playing the banjo. He's the one that made this banjo of mine. And old Roby Hicks has got his back to us, and we're probably singing old Joe Clark which I learned for the first time right then and there, you know? So that was 1938 as you... Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, that's so, so that's where we first met. And all these years since then, we've been writing back and forth and visiting back and forth and uh, enjoying the music. Uh, Frank Prophet's father-in-law uh, was Nathan Hicks, who made this banjo? Good uh, golly! Look at me. all look at all the signatures. Yes, on there's that 150 banjo. signatures on there of people that have sung with this banjo, and yours was one of the first. Well, I also see. I don't know if the camera can get this close enough. I see Woody Guthrie, Lead Belly, Big Bill, Big Bill Brunzi, Cisco Houston, Cisco Houston, Alan. San uh, Carl Sandberg was the first one to sign it. My God. Yeah. So it's on, you know, it's all around. It's everywhere. The names are everywhere. So it's a museum piece now. <clears throat> the um, picture uh, that you see now is Frank Prophet playing with Nathan Hicks, his father-in-law. Nathan's playing on a dulcimer, uh, like the one he made me when I was, uh, when I first went down there. So that's the young Frank Prophet right there. Uh, that's in the 30s. Maybe we can see uh, Nathan Hicks and his wintergreen still. Uh, that's one of their cash crops, is gathering wintergreen up on the mountains and uh, running it through a still and getting the, the uh, product from it. Then we started recording. At first, we didn't have a record maker of any kind. And then we got one for a little field machine. And this is my, my wife, Ann, Ann Warner, uh, recording Frank Prophet outside the first house that he built for his family after he and Bessie got married, moved up into Pick Bridges Valley where they lived. So then you can see uh, a picture of him playing with uh, Bessie's aunt, Mrs. Buna Hicks. That's, uh, that's Mrs. Buna Hicks there 
that's a more recent picture. Uh, in fact, she's still playing like mad. I had her at, at the Asheville Festival. Is that Frank le sitting to the left of her playing the guitar? Uh-huh. Frank Prophet? That's Frank Prophet playing the guitar. And that's Buna Hicks playing the fiddle in the old-fashioned way. And then, then uh, their, their younger cousin came over and did a dance for him. He's six feet eight. <laughs> and he's doing a clog there on the top of the mountain. It's, uh, the music is the most important thing in the world of these people, you know, I mean, in isolation. This is a picture of Frank and the second house that he built with his own hands, and that's his tobacco crop back there. That was the, the best uh, income he had was his, his tobacco crop, and that's Frank standing out in his valley, in Pickbridge's Valley. And then you can see a visit that we had there. The, I'm sitting on, on the little footbridge out in front of his house with my two boys listening to him play and learning his songs and the boys grew up to sing too and have made records with me and sung a great deal on their own uh, Frank uh, developed <coughs> his old uh, his father's old house into a uh, into a workshop where he made banjos if you look back there in the, in the back of that picture you can see that the, the the uh, banjos that he's making. I was recording him in his old workshop there uh, a few years ago. That's not so long ago. So that you can see that all through these years we've, um, we've been recording. And then we got him to come to New York. And this is the first time he ever left that part of the country and came to New York. He's outside of the, the bus station there, a stranger in a strange land, I tell you. I missed, we, I went to the wrong bus station, and he had to wait for an hour till I got there, and I've just met him now, and he is sort of glad to see me. He's on the way to a, a camp, and this is a camp where we taught, where we do teach folk music. Uh, Country Dance Society of America runs a folk song camp at the end of August, and so Frank is showing them how to play a dulcimer uh, in that picture. And uh, I think uh, I've got one other picture of him as he was building his new modern house up on top of his mountain. So this is Frank Prophet, the carpenter. Now that that, uh, that house is built and he lived long enough to enjoy it and, and he left it to his family of his wife and six children. So I suppose that's about the last picture Maybe we have. Uh, folks would like to see a banjo made by Frank Prophet, the carpenter, because I yeah. asked him to, to make me one, mm -hmm. and he mailed it to me. Didn't have any frets on it. Pete, did you know that the first guitars that came into the mountains, they filed off the frets? No fool. That's right, because they were used to using uh, instruments for that fret. Say, I don't know if they've got the record there handy, but maybe we've been talking about Sir Frank so much they might like to hear him Wouldn't that be himself. Good just and, to bring his voice back. Uh, play a little bit of that one, Groundhog. Groundhog, Groundhog. Is one of his favorite song. Put the record on. He's playing a dulcimer. Shoulder my gun, I whisk for my dog. Shoulder my gun, I whisk for my dog. I headed to the mountain for the tree of groundhog. Groundhog. Two in a rock and three in a log. Two in a rock and three in a log. Good God Almighty, what a big groundhog. Groundhog. Run, you Jim, with a great long hole. Run, you Jim, with a great long hole. 
the great long pole that twists this crown all out of his old brown house. Yonder comes Granny a walking on a cane. Yonder comes Granny a walking on a cane. Swear she'll eat them ground on brain, brown house. Yonder comes Sal with a snigger and a grand. Yonder comes Sal with a snigger and a grand. The ground all grease all over her chin. Brown hole. The hides in the cupboard, the meat's in the churn. The hides in the cupboard, the meat's in the churn. I think good ground hog I'll be darned. Brown hog. Took him home, I tanned his hide. I took him home, I tanned his hide. I made the best shoes, drank some of our tight brown hole. He made good dulcimers, too. Yay! Hey, Frank, sing us another one of Frank Crawford's songs. Oh, let's see. Johnson boys, they went to court, and Johnson boys, they didn't stay in reason why they went no further. Had no money but pay their way, had no money but pay their way. Johnson boys, brave and hearty, they know how to court old maids, kiss and hug and call them honey. Rush up, pretty girl, don't be afraid, rush up, pretty girl, don't be afraid. Johnson boys, play your fiddle. Johnson boys, sing your song. Johnson boys, hug in the middle. Hug in the middle and you can't go wrong. Hug in the middle and you can't go wrong. Are there more verses than that? Oh, lots more. <laughs> Johnson boys went to the mountain. Johnson boys didn't direct for the stay. Met up with some high-born ladies. Didn't get back till the break of day. Didn't get back till the break of day. Didn't get back till the break of day. Oh, didn't get back till the break of day. Johnson boys get mighty sassy. Johnson boys think they're men. Wash their, comb their hair and wash their faces. Look pretty good for the shape they're in. Look pretty good for the shape they're in. Look pretty good for the shape they're in. Ah. Oh, son of a gun. I was going to bring a little letter that Frank Prophet wrote a dulcimer player. Yeah, I Howie Mitchell. That. Howie Mitchell wrote him and said, Dear Mr. Prophet, would you tell us some of the experiences you've had in making dulcimers? Because I'm writing a book on how people can build their own dulcimers. Yeah. Oh, if I can only remember what he said. Frank wrote back and says, Dear Mr. Mitchell, he says, uh, I've tried making dulcimers out of poplar, but they wasn't popular. <laughs> I made them out of sour wood, but the tone wasn't sweet-like. Uh, made some out of sassafras, and people didn't like the tone, but they loved the tea it made. Sandalwood? Uh, uh, yes, yeah, sandal, dulcimers made out of sandalwood's good for them that don't like to play with their toes. <laughs> uh, he says, I got a letter from our state prison. They wanted dulcimers fretted with hacksaw blades. <laughs> I'm closing these few lines, Mr. Mitchell. Hoping the hymns pick up your spirits. If not, try the other way. <laughs> uh, it's because Frank Prophet did have this subtle sense of humor that I, I, I wanted to mention that because we did have one little movie of Frank yeah. singing. But he was he was kind of ill at ease. It was up at the Newport Folk well, Festival. Well, he was out of his element. That's right. He, he left his farm and he'd come to Newport, Rhode Island. And there were 5,000 young people all beaming up at him. Yeah. However, he bravely, he mounted the stand, sat down in front of the microphone. Turn on the movie and you'll see Frank Prophet himself in Newport, Rhode Island in the summer of 1964. I'm very glad to be here. 
This uh, type of playing was never intended to be played, I don't suppose, to such a large crowd, because the banjo, like this, was made to play in the cabins in my mountain country. But it seemed like people want to hear him, and they asked me to go, and so I'm up here today, enjoying it very much. Would like it to be a little warmer, but I'm going to sing a song now about uh, uh, Yankee soldier. His feelings about crossing the mountains of North Carolina into Tennessee and joining the Union forces, and he sang like this. I'm going across the mountain, oh, fare you well. Going across the mountain, oh, fare you well. This time tomorrow, if nothing happens to me, I'll be way down yonder in old Tennessee. I'm going across the mountain, oh, fare you well. Going across the mountain, oh, fare you well. Well, that was Frank Prophet, a great our, man. Our guy. A great man. And the reason he was great is that he didn't try to be great. He just wanted to be himself, you an honest true. man. Yeah. Just wanted to be an honest man. You but felt it under any circumstances that you were working with him in. That's right. Home and abroad. We have time for a few more songs. We'll take just a little bit of break again. See you in a minute. All right. Well, this is the first song he taught me that Sunday afternoon. A good little man come in at noon. Dan do, Dan do. Good little man come in at noon. Have you got my dinner soon? To my high land, to my low land. Crish, crash, drink, go. Little man went out to his sheep pen, Dan do, Dan do. Little man went out to his sheep pen, down with the weather and off with his skin, to my high land, to my low land, crish, crash, cringle. He laid the hide all on her back, Dan do, Dan do. He laid the hide all on her back, the way he made that hickory crack, to my high land, to my low land. Crash, crash, gringo. I'll tell my father and all my kin, Dan do, Dan do. I'll tell my father and all my kin how you dress your mutton skin, the high land, the low land. Crash, crash, gringo. You can tell your father and your brothers too, Dan do, Dan do. You can tell your father and your brothers too. What a whooping I give you to my high land, to my low land, crash, crash, gringo. Next day, little man come in from the plow, Dan do, Dan do. Next day, little man come in from the plow. She met him at the door, said, your dinner's ready now, to my high land, to my low land, crash, crash, gringo. Now that, you, you know, that's an old, old English song, that's the weather true. skin. That's right. Yeah, but that was uh, one of the numerous songs, one of the songs they loved to, to, to laugh at up there, of how Ooh. this man uh, trained his wife to do the job around the house. Uh, really ought to, having, having a kind of an anti-woman song like that, ought to have a, a pro-woman song yes, somehow. that's right. That's do you know the one? Equinoctial swore by the green leaves on the tree That he could do more work in a day than his wife could do in three, three He could do more work in a day than his wife could do in three If that be true, little Phoebe said, then this you must allow You come do the work in the house and I'll go follow the plow, plow You come do the work in the house, I'll go follow the plow 
It's you must feed the little pig that stands in yonder sty. You must milk the brindle cow, up here she would go dry, dry. You must milk the brindle cow, up here she would go dry. You must churn the crock of cream that I left in the frame. You must watch the fat in the pot, or it'll all go in a flame, flame. You must watch the fat in the pot, or it'll all go in a flame. And you must watch the speckled hen for fear she'd run astray. And you must wind that hank of yarn that I spun yesterday, day. You must wind the hank of yarn that I spun yesterday. So little Phoebe took the whip and went to follow the plow. The equinoctial took the pail and went to milk the cow. Cow, equinoctial took the pail and went to milk the cow. Well, he went to milk the brindle cow, but she wrinkled up her nose. She give him a dip upon the lip and the blood run to his toes. Toes, she give him a dip upon the lip and the blood run to his toes. Well, he went to churn the crock of cream that she left in the frame, and he forgot the fat in the pot, and it all went in a flame, flame. He forgot the fat in the pot, it all went in a flame. He went to wind the hank of yarn that she spun yesterday, and he forgot the speckled hen, and so she run astray, stray. He forgot the speckled hen, so she run astray. Well, presently little Phoebe came and saw him looking sad. She clapped her hands upon her side and swore that she was glad, glad. Clapped her hands upon her side and swore that she was glad. So Equinox shall swore by all the stars in heaven that she could do more work in a day than he could do in seven, seven. She could do more work in a day than he could do in seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, now we're equal. <laughs> Frank Warner, we got time just to sing that song, which so many people know, and uh, which was really, in a way, uh, my introduction to you. Is that the is first right. When I first met mm -hmm. you, you were singing this song, Tom Dooley, yeah. about a murder that took place just 100 years ago. That's right. And uh, so maybe if we end off with it, and anybody out there would like to join in, you're welcome to do so. That's right. Get some harmony on it. Is this good key? All right. That's right. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Hang down your head and cry. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Poor boy, you're bound to die. I met her on the mountain, thar I took her life. I met her on the mountain and stopped her with my eyes. Hang, hang down, down your, your head, head Tom Dooley. Hang down your head and cry. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Poor boy, you're bound to die. This time tomorrow, I reckon where I'll be. If it hadn't been for Grayson, I'd been in Tennessee. Now you all sing it. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Hang down your head and cry. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Poor oh boy, you're bound to die. Tom Dooley. 
Tom Dooley, poor oh, boy, boy, you're, you're bound, bound to die. die. Now let me hear you. You know, isn't it the doggone this thing? Just as a party gets started, we've got to quit it. That's right. We just got time to sing a verse or so or more, and then we got to go. Party going. Don't stop the party just because we got to go. This time tomorrow, where you reckon I'll be? Down in some lonesome valley, a hanging on a white oak tree. Oh, hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Hang down your head and cry. magic strand of rainbow design of rainbow design in it I'd weave the bravery of women giving birth in it I'd weave the innocence of children over all the earth children Magic band to every city, through every single land, through every land. Show my brothers and my sisters.